Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders are some of the fastest growing communities in America. We are over 23 million strong, representing over 50 ethnicities and speaking over 100 languages. We are here, we are united, and we are making our voices heard. In 2020, we went from being marginalized to being the margin of victory, delivering the White House and Congress in one of the most important elections in our history. But none of that would have been possible without all of our grassroots organizers, national affinity groups, and dedicated volunteers. You reached out to thousands of voters and delivered historic results for our community and our nation. Because every vote counts. Every Bangladeshi American vote. Every Chinese American vote. Every Hmong American vote. Every Indian American vote. Every Indonesian Chinese American vote. Every Thai American vote. Every Taiwanese American vote. Every Vietnamese American vote. Every Pakistani American vote. Every Sri Lankan American vote. Every Filipino American vote. Every Japanese American vote. Every Pacific Islander vote. Every Asian American vote. Every Sikh, Nepali, Bhutani, South Asian American vote. So thank you to everyone for all of your hard work and dedication in supporting President Biden and Vice President Harris. But there is more work to be done. If we want the Biden-Harris administration and Democrats to continue delivering for us, we need to meet the, the moment once more. We need your help to turn out the AA NHPI vote across the country this November. Join us. Our progress and our voices are on the line. United we stand, together we rise, because together we are the margin of victory. Happy Heritage Month. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us and our special guests in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the singing of the national anthem led by two-time Grammy winner, Tia Carrera. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Please welcome the chair of the DNC AAPI caucus, Ms. Bell Leong Hong. Good afternoon. My name is Bell Leong Hong, and I'm the chair of the DNC AAPI caucus. I am really excited to welcome you to the DNC Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander celebration of our heritage. We have the honor of closing this month of celebration with our event. 
And I have to tell you that we are doing it with a bang as we honor our past, our history, our heritage, and our legacies, celebrate our present accomplishments and salute our future generation of leaders. My role as chair of the DNC AAPI caucus is to ensure that our AAPI voices are represented at the highest level of the Democratic National Committee, to encourage and support our AAPIs in reaching their maximum potential and to take a seat at the table. I am honored and grateful for opportunities like this to lift up our community as we celebrate AAPI rising. We are indeed a community in the, on the rise. We have accomplished a lot and we have proven in the last several election cycles that electorally, we are the margin of victory. And in fact, despite the gloom and doom of naysayers, we can win and we will win in this midterms. To do so, we must continue in the trajectory of activism, of getting our friends, our acquaintances, our families, our moms, dads, uncles, aunties, cousins, titas, titos, young friends, elderly friends, in fact, every eligible voter out to vote. That is how we win. In the next hour, we will show we have much to celebrate and much to be proud of. And to kick this off, I am honored and privileged to be able to introduce to our community for the very first time, a very, very special speaker. We know him as the first ever second gentleman of the United States, Mr. Douglas Emhoff, a role which he is relishing in playing as a very supportive spouse, as one of the four administration's principals, he is a highly effective ambassador for this administration, both at home and abroad, and a strong advocate for public health safety and religious freedom and tolerance. He is breaking new grounds in very effectively defining the role of a second gentleman. Since there has never been a female vice president before, and with the election of our very own heroine, Kamala Harris, we now have for the first time a second gentleman. As he defines his role as the first ever second gentleman of the United States, Doug Emhoff proudly carves out his role in history by representing the United States and this administration's agenda and policies at home and abroad, bringing his very successful professional experience and his savvy and experienced voice to help in this uh, administration carry forward their agenda. He has been a loud voice and made it his top priority to encourage people to protect themselves and their communities against the spread of COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. As the first Jewish spouse of a president or vice president, he has been proud to share his Jewish heritage and culture and regularly engages with individuals of the Jewish faith and other faith-based groups to discuss this administration's priorities to strengthen religious tolerance and protect religious freedom. Mr. Emhoff has always been supportive of AAPI events and causes. He has presided over Diwali events at the White House and most recently the Buddhist festival of Vikak and other interfaith events. One of his causes is to make sure that, and I quote what he said on January 18, 2021, I am the first man to take this role, but I definitely don't want to be the last. So I am do, going to do everything I can to set a good example and inspire the next generation of supportive spouses. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud and honored to present to you the first ever second gentleman of the United States, Douglas Emhoff. Hello, everyone. On behalf of President Biden, Vice President Harris, and the entire administration, I want to wish you all a happy Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. While this month has always been a time of celebration and coming together, 
I want to first express my condolences for the loss of former Commerce and Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta. Norm was the first Asian American mayor of a major city, the first Asian American cabinet secretary, a champion of the Japanese American redress movement, a sponsor of the first Asian Pacific American Heritage Week, and a mentor to countless leaders, including my wife, Vice President Harris. The storied legacy Norm left behind will benefit all of us for years to come. I also want to thank DNC AAPI Caucus Chair Belle Liang Hong for her tireless dedication to the AANHPI community. And I want to acknowledge my friends, DNC Vice Chair Senator Tammy Duckworth and DNC Chair Jamie Harrison for their leadership. President Biden and Vice President Harris have delivered for the AANHPI community. Since President Biden took office, 8.3 million jobs have been created. Asian American unemployment has been reduced to 3.2%. Billions of dollars in support have been provided to help restaurants hit hard by the pandemic through the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Funding from the American Rescue Plan has helped schools reopen safely and President Biden signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law. President Biden, Vice President Harris, and the Democrats are delivering for Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. But we have much more to do. So we all need to roll up our sleeves and keep working. We have to make sure our friends and families are registered to vote. We have to make sure that the ANHPI community knows what is at stake this November. In order for our administration and the Democrats to continue to fight and deliver for you, we must win. So thank you for everything you're doing and keep up the hard work. Happy AANHPI Heritage Month! Ladies and gentlemen, Tony and Grammy Award winner David Henry Wong and SAG Award winner Gemma Chan. Hi, I'm David Henry Wong. I'm a playwright and screenwriter, and I'm here with my friend, my collaborator, Gemma Chan. The subject is Anna Mae Wong. And for those of you who haven't heard of her, um, she was the first Chinese American, arguably the first Asian American um, movie star. Um, her career began in 1919 and continued all the way to the time of her passing in 1961. And Gemma, when and how did you first learn about Anna Mae Wong? So quite a few years ago now, I came across a silent film called Piccadilly, which um, I had heard Martin Scorsese had described as one of the truly great films of the silent era. So I was intrigued to watch it. And I watched it and there was this Chinese or Asian actress that I had never seen before who really stole the show. Um, so I, I watched that film and then looked her up and couldn't believe I didn't know who she was. And the more I learned about her, the more interested and um, fascinated I was because she had a really extraordinary life. She was a trailblazer, uh, a woman ahead of her time. And, you know, despite the challenges and prejudice she faced she she achieved an awful lot. Gemma you as you know you were in my show Yellow Face uh, when it received its London premiere before you became known all over the world um, you were doing the good you know actress climb um, in London and in, in British theater and so when you think about Anna Mae Wong um, which of her achievements and challenges are most meaningful to you? Mm. Well, you know, Anna Mae Wong, she was born in 1905. Um, and she, you know, this was not long after, you know, the Chinese Exclusion Act, um, a time where there was kind of prevalent anti-Asian, anti-Chinese sentiment. You know, it was really extraordinary that she became a film star in Hollywood at this time. Um, she faced considerable prejudice and stereotyping. She, you know, in her career was often limited to playing these quite stereotyped roles, you know, either the lotus flower or the dragon lady 
parts um, which she grew very tired of having to play and you know despite all of that she she never gave up she had this incredible capacity for reinvention so when uh, opportunities became somewhat limited in Hollywood she went to Europe and became a huge star there uh, became a fashion icon she also had a vaudeville show which she toured around the world she toured Australia she oh my goodness she did so much um she, she, she appeared, also, on, on, appeared on Broadway also she did yes um in a play called On the Spot uh, which had a, a really long run and uh, she was also the star of a TV show and I, I think am I right in saying that she was the first uh she was in the first TV show that had an Asian American lead I think so I think that's right yeah I think yeah. That, I mean it was in the 50s and um I think that's fair to say one of the things that's uh, I think interesting even to someone of my generation and uh certainly to younger people today, is that um, in 1905, she was an ABC. She was born in America. It's not like she was an immigrant. Yeah, she, she was born in 1905. She was third generation Chinese American. So her grandparents had been in the US since at least 1955, I believe. Or 1855, and, yeah. 18, sorry, 1855. Um, and yeah, so, you know, where she grew up, um, she grew up in uh, Chinatown, Los Angeles. Um, she worked in her father's laundry. So, as you say, there were considerable societal challenges and um, racism, unfortunately, at that time that she faced. And, you know, we talk about, you know, art imitating life and life imitating art. And really, you know, the struggles that she faced at that time and both in her life and in her career are really relevant to a lot of the challenges and the conversations that we're still having today in terms of um, otherizing and, uh, you know, always being considered an outsider or, or not properly American, uh, despite the fact that she was third generation. So this year, 2022, um, American Quarters, 25 cent piece, um, are going to feature five American women. Uh, one of whom is Anna Mae Wong. Oh, it's so significant and um, amazing, really, that she's going to be featured on these coins alongside amazing women such as, you know, Maya Angelou and Sally Ride. And just to have her there amongst that group um, to finally be truly being recognized in a very public way as, um, as an American and to have made these contributions uh, is is an amazing achievement and long overdue, I would say. You know, she never quite got her due in her lifetime, but I feel that now finally um, that is happening and hopefully a lot more people will know her name and what she uh, went through and what she achieved. And, and it's really a celebration of, of her life. Now, many people know your name as a movie star um, from everything from Crazy Rich Asians to two Marvel movies. You and I, it's a recent, recently been announced that we're going to be uh, working on a movie, a biopic about Anna Mae Wong. Um, and I, I kind of remember you talking about wanting to play her really back when we first met. So I think this has been um, a, a pretty longstanding dream for you and I feel very privileged to be part of it. Why has it been important for you to make a movie about her and what do you hope our film is going to achieve? Gosh, well, I think it's really important to acknowledge those who came before, um, actors like Anna Mae Wong, who really, you know, paved the way um, for what we're doing today. She ran that first lap and it was a really tough first lap. Um, I hope that with our movie that we get to tell her story, um, hopefully do her justice, celebrate her achievements, you know, celebrate the fact that she was a, quite a complex woman um, with this film. We will we'll get to dive a little bit deeper um, into her story. Thank you so much, Gemma, for joining us here um, and um, remembering Anna Mae Wong. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you, David and Gemma, for that great conversation about Anna Mae Wong, a legendary figure whose life will be celebrated and remembered with the first coin in our realm dedicated to an Asian American figure, so proud.
To continue in this vein of celebrating our heroes, I want to turn our attention to the celebration of someone who has touched the lives of practically all Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders that are in public service, whether in the government or non-government sectors for the last several decades. I am not exaggerating the impact of this one person on so many of us. As a point of personal privilege, I want to talk about my mentor and friend, Norman Mineta. He is a mentor to so many of us, a selfless giant who always had a kind and encouraging word, a sound advice, a helpful nudge, and yes, a mischievous smile. Norman Mineta's story has been told many, many times of the American boy who was interned by his own government and who not only survived that ordeal, but went on to become the first elected AAPI councilman mayor of San, and, and mayor of San Jose. And then as the first Asian American congressman of Japanese ancestry in continental United States, he became the agent of change that obtained the apology from this same government and obtained redress for the unjust law that incarcerated and marginalized a whole group of Americans simply because of their heritage. Though told many times in many forms, his story will never grow old. In his more than 50 years of public service, both as an elected official as an, and as an appointed official, who has the distinct honor of serving as a cabinet secretary to two different presidents in both a democratic administration and a Republican administration. He is a true patriot and his courage and his dedication know no bound. As many may still remember those dark days in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, when he had the presence of mind to secure the airspace to safeguard our nation. We have Secretary Mineta to thank for our national safety in those dangerous times. His motto of just do what is right guided his actions and he has instilled that unto those of us that had the honor of following him. That and his passion for building a sustainable pipeline of young AAPI leaders in every sector so that they take their place at the table of decision-making his only requirement is that those that he help turns around to help those who follow them. When he was first elected to Congress, you could count the numbers of AAPIs active in politics with one hand. Today, we have generations of active AAPIs in politics, in policy, in elected positions at every level of government, in nonprofit leadership, positions in corporate America, all of because of one man's belief in doing what is right. The body of his work will be long studied and emulated. His impact on generations of AAPIs in public service is immeasurable. His impact in changing the institution of government is also immeasurable. For this and for so many other things we name Norm Mineta, the DNC AAPI champion. A brief tribute was prepared by our dear friend, Samantha Chang, excerpted from her documentary, A Boy from San Jose, to be followed by acceptance remarks from Norma Mineta's wife, Mrs. Denny Mineta. Many of us fondly remember Norman Mineta as a man who devoted his life to public service and worked to better the lives of all Americans. However, we may not remember the many specific accomplishments that he achieved. Here are just a few. Norm's first role as a public servant was his appointment to the San Jose City Council in 1967. He was elected mayor of San Jose in 1971, becoming the first Asian American mayor of a major city in the United States. Then, in 1974, he moved on to the U.S. Congress 
and served 10 terms. There, he championed and shepherded the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 through both houses of Congress. It included an apology to the over 120,000 Japanese Americans interred in concentration camps during World War II and granted reparations for their wrongful imprisonment. He helped people with disabilities gain access to public transportation and public facilities without shame or humiliation. His work on the transportation elements within the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Intermodal Transportation Act ensured that buses, trains, and airplanes would accommodate persons with disabilities. These acts of Congress also mandated elevators, escalators, curb cuts, and disability parking spaces when urban planning involved federal funds. He created two dynamic and complementary organizations to promote the interests of Asian Pacific Americans within the political process. The first is KPAC, the Asian Pacific American Caucus. It brings together members of Congress who are of Asian or Pacific Islander descent or who have a strong dedication to promoting the well-being of the AAPI community. The second is APACS, the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies. APACS is a nonprofit organization that encourages Asian Pacific American participation at all levels of the political process, with particular emphasis on issues of education and health. Norm's ongoing advocacy for the interest of Asian Pacific Americans included working for the creation of the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Center. He also established the APA Members of Congress Oral History Project, and to date, more than a dozen oral histories have been recorded. Reflecting his many interests, Norm inspired a number of additional organizations that now bear his name, among them the Mineta Transportation Institute at San Jose State University, where students can learn about careers in transportation, the Mineta Leadership Academy at San Jose State University, which develops public sector leaders to serve in the transportation industry and offers a Master of Science in Transportation Management, the Mineta Simpson Institute, an interpretive center at Heart Mountain in Wyoming, the camp where Norm was interred as a child, and the Norman Y. Mineta Leadership Institute in Washington, D.C., which offers leadership training for nonprofit staff, community leaders, and volunteers from cities across the United States. Through these accomplishments and more, Norm was indeed a continuing champion for all Americans. He is missed and will always be in our hearts. Hello, my name is Jenny Mineta, and I'm Norm Mineta's wife. On behalf of the entire Mineta and Brantner family, I'm pleased to accept the singular honor of recognizing Norm as the DNC AAPI champion. I want to thank the DNC and the DNC AAPI caucus in particular for recognizing Norm with this honor. Norm dedicated his entire life to promoting democratic values and helping Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders find their political voices within the Democratic Party. He touched the lives and careers of many Democrats, not only in the AAPI community, but in the broader community as well. He wanted to make sure that not only did Asian AANHPIs have a seat at the table, but they sat in as many seats in the political realm as possible. He mentored, he counseled, he listened, he pushed, he opened doors. He was there for the community. This is who Norm was. As a lifelong public servant, we see the fruits of Norm's efforts in the political arena here today. If Norm were here, he would say thanks a million. I say thank you for honoring Norm and his legacy. Thank you, Denny, for accepting this well-deserved honor to Norm. We love you. My grandma plops down next to me and jabs a finger at this throbbing vein above my eye. She can't resist. It's 2005 and I've been summoned to Taiwan and now this whole thing's got me feeling kind of pissed. 
Her 88th year birthday plus a 20 hour flight Combined with all my screamy cousins in a kitchen Will do that to me She wants to tell me something, but I barely understand So we're like two deaf pandas trying to work it out There's pantomime and smiling and my busted Taiwanese Then my inside voice starts sounding like a shout Cause all the noise and all the babies and the elder son devotion And the paths of fake humility are making me wish I was adopted my grandma says I shouldn't over-worry My grandma says that family is the gift that's always been And maybe it's my memory is blurry But she says it all by pointing at my sneakers with her chin She throws her arm around me and she forces me to look In the direction of my dad and Uncle Scott it's like they're back in college with the drinking and the laughing and the stories that the rest of us forgot. I guess she likes that they're so brotherly, but then it hits me square that I don't have the first idea what the hell these two men are saying. Cause now they're speaking Mandarin, which is like a totally different dialect. My grandma says her life has been fantastic My grandma says that travel is the secret to her youth And maybe I'm just tired and over drastic But I question if my 80-something grandma speaks the truth Cause I have traveled and still I'm stressed Cause I worry about one thing till the point that I'm obsessed Which is how do I preserve this thing I've never seen the heart of This branch of my own history I've barely been a part of How can I be 30 and not know your given name? I know I'm is fine but it's not the same There's just a few years left I'm uh, Just a very few years left Mama. Then that's the game My grandma would have laughed, let me tell you Point fingers and she'd laugh if she were here But now that she is gone It's just as well you know That thing she tried to show me was finally made clear she said Naomi has my heart and Peter has my mind and Melody's a winner and Lily was so kind and Sam had all my virtue and Scott won't be defined Doug and Dennis share my pride Jordan has my cautious side And maybe it's baloney <laughs> But Tom and Joe and Joni All love their kids And everybody else's kids Beside And Justin is a genius And Chris is such a man And Alan loves to travel See the world as best he can But Yi Chen, Akai, Yi Ting And I agree that you've got my song, Tim. You've got my song, Tim. You've got my song, Tim. And that's how you'll remember me. You'll remember me. You'll remember me. Please welcome DNC Chair Jamie Harrison. Hello, folks. It is so good to be with you as we mark the end of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I want to thank Belle for everything she does for the DNC as our AAPI Caucus Chair. My friends, before I say anything else, I want to acknowledge the passing of Secretary 
Norman Mineta. Secretary Mineta leaves behind a long legacy, a legacy of fighting for justice and equity, a legacy that lives on in so many of you, a legacy that includes this very Heritage Month. I'm so grateful that Denise Mineta, Secretary Mineta's wife, is joining us today as we pay tribute to Norman. I can think of no better way to celebrate his memory than to celebrate and uplift the undeniable power of AANHPI communities. AANHPI communities have made essential contributions to every aspect of our society, and the Biden-Harris administration is proud of how we've delivered for them. With the leadership of President Biden and Vice President Harris, we passed the American Rescue Plan to lift families out of poverty and ensure small businesses stay open. Thanks to the leadership of folks like Second, uh, Senator Maisie Hirano, Senator Tammy Duckworth, and Representative Grace Ming, we passed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act to send a clear message that we don't tolerate anti-Asian hate. Now, the president has a bold agenda to bring down costs, one that includes lowering childcare costs, energy costs, and prescription drug costs. Folks, we're only just getting started. We're going to continue getting results and addressing the everyday needs of the AANHPI communities across this nation. We're also going to fight for every vote, whether we're organizing Indian Americans in Georgia or Filipino Americans in Las Vegas, or any one of the diverse AANHPI communities in this country. We won't take anyone for granted. And that's how we're going to win in November. It's going to take each and every one of us working together. We can do it. We can make our own history. So thank you all for everything that you do for the Democratic Party and happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Please welcome back Gemma Chan. And now I'd like to welcome my friend and colleague, Harry Shum Jr. Thank you, Gemma. And it is always so great to see you even from afar. I'm really excited about your project with David Henry Huang. I'm looking forward to it. Hello everyone, I'm Harry Shum Jr. and I'm here wishing you a very happy Heritage Month. And there's a lot to celebrate from the success of Crazy Rich Asians, the cinematic universe, and Shang-Chi to Never Have I Ever and Bridgerton. AAPIs are perhaps more visible now than ever before. And that also includes our PI superhero families such as the Rock, Jason Momoa, David Batista, and Haley Steinfeld. Now, in just the past few months alone, the AAPI pop history book Rise was named New York Times bestseller and one of its authors, Phil Yu, won a Peabody Award. Not to mention also that James Hong, Ming Na Wen, Jason Momoa, and Apple the App from Black Eyed Peas will have and be honored with their very own star on the Walk of Fame. Now, we also lead some of the largest corporations in America, including Microsoft, Google, Twitter, DoorDash, and Zoom. And we also even have an AAPI vice president. And it really seems like we are everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, AAPIs across the country are rising to meet this moment. From mayors such as Michelle Wu, Bruce Harrell, Todd Gloria, and Aftab Pruval to our friends in Congress, Senator Duckworth, Senator Hirano, uh, Representative Jayapal, Representative Meng, and, and so many more. Which is why it is incredibly wonderful that the DNC is taking this opportunity to honor and celebrate our collective accomplishments. Accomplishments like passing legislation against anti-Asian hate crimes, which makes it easier for APIs to report hate crimes. Now, the law also directs the Department of Justice to expedite the review of those particular hate crimes. Now, there's gonna be a lot more on the way, and the bill's promoting AAPI curriculum in schools and AAPI museums are making their way through Congress. So these bills, they aim to protect our health and safety while also preserving our heritage and making sure that our story is told as part of the American story. There's still a lot more work that needs to be done. So a recent study has shown that 42% of Americans cannot name a single well-known Asian American. 42%. Now that, that's nearly half the country. So it's, it's really going to take all of us working together, 
to make sure that we can have an America where we are seen and where we can thrive and, and be celebrated for our contributions to the American dream and, and the American story. So what we cannot do is move backwards. We can't do that, never again. So please organize, mobilize, and activate your communities to vote this November. So we need to continue to elect more officials that support a vision of America where we are embraced rather than erased. So to all the leaders, activists, artists, and community organizers out there, thank you so much for all that you do and continue to do. So be well, everybody, and happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Please welcome DNC Vice Chair Tammy Duckworth. Hi, everyone. I'm Senator Tammy Duckworth and DNC Vice Chair, and I'm proud to wish you all a happy Asian American Pacific Islander Native Hawaiian Heritage Month. Our community's history, heritage, and achievements are woven into the fabric of our nation. In our workforce, military, or anywhere, our presence, leadership, and diversity make our nation stronger as we work to create that more perfect union. But even as Asian Americans continue to face many all too familiar challenges and hardships, we are resilient. We are united, we are strong, and we belong. And I'm proud of how far we've come under President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and Democratic leadership, despite unprecedented, nearly unanimous Republican obstruction. In the last year, we delivered on our promise to manage the COVID-19 pandemic, mitigate its impact on our economy, support small businesses, and lift up working families across the country, regardless of the color of their skin or where they live. Democrats' American Rescue Plan did what we wrote it to do. It rescued our economy with record job growth and record low unemployment. But beyond recovering from this pandemic, we also delivered on our promise to rebuild our nation stronger and better than before. Right now, the bipartisan infrastructure law is at working communities across the country, helping us fix our crumbly roads and bridges, expand broadband internet access, clean up our drinking water and water systems, and create good paying local jobs for years to come. Illinois has the misfortune of being home to the most known lead service lines than any other state in the country. With my bipartisan Drinking Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Act included in this historic infrastructure package, we're finally starting to get the, the lead out of our drinking water so, so that more families can trust that the water running out of their faucets in their homes won't make them or their children sick. And I couldn't be prouder. From enacting the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, I helped introduce reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act and so much more, Democrats have taken significant strides to improve the lives of everyday Americans. But while these laws are great at progress, some things have not changed for the better in the AANHPI community. Not only have Asian Americans been on the forefront of this pandemic, but our community continues to be targeted for, by racism, hatred, and violence. Tragically, anti-Asian hate crimes have increased by 339% in the last year, 339%. So we can't stop doing everything in our power to build on our hate crimes law, uproot systemic racism, and ensure that our community has the protection and support that they need to thrive throughout this pandemic and beyond. Over and over again, it's proven that words matter, representation matter, leadership matters, and Republicans have proven that they are unfit to lead and understand what our community and the rest of the American people need. In recent weeks, Republicans voted against funding to help get infant formula back on our shelves, against making gas price gouging illegal, and against working to curb domestic terrorism. And why would they vote against helping the American people? Because they would rather perpetuate a crisis that they can blame Democrats for than actually help working for Americans with the midterms on the horizon. It's unforgivable. At every turn, Republicans are undermining democratic efforts to move our country forwards while they are actively working to drag us backwards. Right now, Republicans are on the verge of dragging us back to a time when the government could force people to give birth even if they did not want to. Something that's particularly cruel when those same Republicans are the reason so many Americans don't have access to maternal health care child care or paid parental leave. If the latest draft opinion becomes a reality, five unelected ultra-conservative Supreme Court justices 
are seemingly prepared to take a right away from Americans for the first time in our nation's history. And it won't be the last. The right to contraception, the right to not send your kids to public school, interracial marriage, gay marriage, it's all on the line. So we can't go back. Because if Republicans regain control of Congress, we know that they'll work to advance a nationwide ban on safe, accessible abortions. They're also literally running a platform that includes raising taxes on more than half of Americans, including on senior citizens. So we have to win. We have to win for reproductive freedom. We have to win to protect the freedom to vote. We have to win to lower the cost for working families. We're all here today because we'll need to work like heck to do it. And we, can, we can't take anything for granted anywhere. From here on out, we have to talk to our neighbors and foster greater outreach in rural communities and communities of color to make sure they know that Democrats who are working to protect their basic rights and make progress on the issues that we all care about. Each and every one of you have done your part. I know that, and I know you'll continue to do so. So let's roll up our sleeves, get back to work, and let's win in November. Billions. That's how many Asian, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders there are around the world. We represent around 60% of the entire planet's population. We are 50 ethnicities strong, from 40 countries, speaking over 100 languages. But despite these billions... If you're a Korean kid from California... Or an Indian from Danbury, Connecticut... It's still easy to feel invisible here in America. Which is why it is important to come together as AANHPIs and celebrate our rich, diverse heritage. As well as our accomplishments. We need to dare to be happy. And dance in the elevator, because it is our time to rise. Just take a look at all the amazing, badass AANHPIs here tonight. There's nothing we can't do if we do it together. Of course. It doesn't take much for us to go back to being invisible. If those in power make it their mission to marginalize us. We can't let that happen. We won't let that happen. So, to you at home, to all you artists and activists and advocates out there, don't stop fighting. Let's show up this November and make sure that our collective voices are heard at the ballot box. We are here to stand for equity and equality. We are here to make sure we rise and we rise together. Because we are not alone. We are not invisible. We are billions. Happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Please welcome the Honorable Grace Meng. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Grace Meng, representing Queens, New York. I'm also the chair of Aspire PAC, the political arm of the Congressional Asian Caucus in Congress. I want to first thank our chairman, Jamie Harrison, for his incredible leadership and always striving to include our AAPI voices at the table. I want to thank my friend, Bell Yang Hong, Senator Tammy Duckworth, and leaders like Roger Lau, who make sure that our voices are always included. API Heritage Month is a time to recognize not only the achievements and contributions of APIs, but also the tremendous impact and resilience of our community. As the daughter of small business owners here in Queens, I'm incredibly thankful for the many, many essential workers and those who worked on the front lines and helped feed and take care of our communities during the pandemic. I'm proud that Democrats fought to pass incredible legislation like the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. It contained over $28 billion in grants for restaurants that lost revenue during the coronavirus. We can't let our government forget that our community's priorities matter. We're the fastest growing community of color in our nation. We have real political influence and we can make a difference when we mobilize together. So for this API Heritage Month, let us proudly share our community's achievements. But we also must share our experiences, our trauma, and our struggles as a reminder that our country must continue to uplift AAPIs and fight for our security. 
Thank you for all you do for our community, and I wish you a happy AAPI Heritage Month. Hello, I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or KPAC. I'm so thrilled to be a part of today's Asian Pacific American Heritage Month celebration. As we continue celebrating Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders, I want to also celebrate the work that Democrats have done to help serve our communities across the nation. We are working hard to ensure that our economic recovery is grounded in equity, and that includes relief for AAPI communities. We succeeded in pushing for SBA COVID relief programs to be translated into Asian languages and ensured a $60 billion set aside for Paycheck Protection Program loans for AAPI and other underserved small businesses. The American Rescue Plan, signed into law by President Biden last year, made even more entities eligible for these funds and created a community navigator program to assist AAPI and other businesses. And we created a historic new $30 billion grant program, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, to help restaurants that were hard hit by the pandemic. In fact, just two months ago, we passed a new package that included an additional $42 billion for restaurants and $13 billion for other hard hit small businesses. We've also been steadfast in pushing back against a historic surge in anti-Asian hate. In fact, since March 2020, over 11,000 anti-Asian hate incidents were reported and anti-Asian hate crimes increased by 339% from 2020 to 2021. But last year, during API Heritage Month, President Biden signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law and we are continuing to work closely with the Department of Justice to ensure its full implementation to combat anti-Asian hate. And just a couple of weeks ago, the Senate passed Congresswoman Grace Meng's bill that starts the process for creating the first National Smithsonian Museum dedicated to AAPI history and culture. And we are excited to get that to the president's desk to be signed into law. We're also excited that thanks to Speaker Pelosi, a portrait of Congress member Patsy Takamoto Mink will be displayed in the halls of the U.S. Capitol in June so that all visitors will be able to see this incredible role model for posterity. So you see, there is so much that we have accomplished together this year, and I look forward to working with you all to continue building on these successes for all of our communities. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month.
Hey all, this is Jeff Yang, co-author of Rise, a pop history of Asian America from the 90s to now, wishing all of you on behalf of my co-authors, Phil Yu and Philip Wong, a happy close to APA Heritage Month. Thanks so much, Harry, for shouting us out in your remarks. We can't wait to see your part of Crazy Rich Asian's story unfold in the months to come. We wrote Rise as a love letter to our community and as a hope chest for future generations. It contains memories of our nostalgic history and opens up a window on our shared present, highlighting the journey that Asian Americans have taken to go from invisibility to the edge of the spotlight. It's a way for all of us in our extended community to remember where we came from and consider where we're going. And for those from beyond our community, it's a way to finally see us, to come into our spaces, to be welcomed into our homes. All we ask is please just take off your shoes first. Here's a little more about RISE. RISE came about first and foremost out of the conversations that Phil and Philip and I had independently and sometimes together about this big gap in kind of our collective memory, the three decades in which the three of us grew up. In 2018, a little film called Crazy Rich Asians came out and it was a wonderful movie that completely changed the game for Asian American representation in Hollywood. But I just remember at the time, there were a lot of headlines. Basically every headline was saying how it was the first movie in 25 years with an all Asian cast. I just remember thinking like, dude, that makes us sound like we haven't done anything for 25 years. That it was just Joy La Club and then we were just hanging out and then Crazy Rich Asians happened. It had been a minute since we'd really taken stock of kind of the milestones of where we're going how we got here. I think we really felt like there was this need to really capture the history of Asian America. And we realized that if we didn't actually tell that story, maybe nobody would. The reason why we chose these decades is because the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, I would say is when Asian Americans really became comfortable in who we were. Sometimes you don't know that history is something that you're living, right? When you're going through it, you don't really realize that this is going to be something that gets documented or canonized in a book, but that's actually what we're trying to do here. We lived through this and these were moments where we rose up and we came to prominence and we were building something. We wanted to be as complete as possible knowing that we're never really going to be complete. And by the end, I guess we had a book. We just want it to start conversations to let people know that, hey, there's so much to our uh, community and our culture that there's still more to tell. And um, this is just kind of like a, a place to start. Every time I think about how darkness drowns out the light, I lose a little bit of hope. I do. And every time I remember the sacrifices my mother and father and family made to get me here, I almost cannot cope. Then I go and I turn the TV news and I see tragedy unfold in real time and I'm left wondering what it all was for that's when I realize it's not a compromise you cannot walk if I don't stand so I stand Cause there's you and the person you are And the things that you do That make this fight worth fighting You and the people you carry That makes the next chapter in this book worth writing Words out loud have never rung more true So thank you I don't know what tomorrow brings But I can't justify Sitting on my hands anymore I can't and I won't Cause if there's a chance that the voice that I've been given Can break the silence that's kept your song from being heard How can I not try? Cause there's you and the person you are And the things that you do that make this fight worth fighting You and the people you carry that makes the next chance 
chapter in this book worth writing. Heart beats loud, together we are strong. I'm not wrong. I am the keeper of legacy. I am the dreamer who wants a more perfect world. Now it's time to stand up and to be heard. Cause with you as a person you are and the things that you do that make this fight worth fighting. You are the people you carry that makes the next chapter in this book worth writing. Voices sing in harmony and In his first week of office, President Biden signed a presidential memorandum to establish official policy to ensure that the federal government stands up against racism, xenophobia, nativism, and bias in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Biden administration also ratified into law the American Rescue Plan, which provides a lifeline to millions of Asian American and native Hawaiian Pacific Islander families who are struggling from the economic and health impacts of the pandemic. The ARP is reducing poverty, expanding relief for mixed status families, and keeping families housed. After four years of relentless attacks on LGBTQ plus rights, the Biden-Harris administration has taken historic actions to accelerate the march towards full LGBTQ plus equality, from protecting the civil rights of every American to ensuring that LGBTQ plus Americans are leaders at every level of the federal government. Though much progress has been made, there are still miles to go before we sleep. Whether it be the strongest among us or our most vulnerable, none of us are free until all of us are free. And we cannot be heard if we do not raise our voice. So get loud. Because you and the person you are and the things that you do that make this fight worth fighting. You and the people you carry that makes the next chapter in this book worth writing. Words out loud have never been more, have never been more true. There's no passage through this without you. There's no passage through this without you. For all our parents. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, just wow. Thank you so much, Tim, for your song, Keeper of Legacy, gave me goosebumps and energize me to go out to vote right now. You're right, we cannot sit on our hands too much is at stake. We must go out and vote and vote for candidates up and down the ticket. It is only when we're well represented at all levels of government that our voices can be heard. Case in point, because Norm was in Congress, he was able to push for legislation to obtain the apologies and redress from his government to the Americans of Japanese ancestry. Because of Congresswoman Grace Meng and Senator Macy Hirono's push, we got the anti-hate legislation passed last year. Because of Congresswoman Grace Meng's leadership, the AAPI Museum Bill was just passed in Congress. Because of the AAPI congressional members and our two AAPI senators, serving in important committees, we are able to ensure that our AAPI needs are not ignored. Our next group of speakers represent the next generation of AAPI political leaders and the next generation of leaders in entertainment. The generation of leaders that our champion Norm Mineta started to recruit and groom for. I am happy to say that Norm's dream of a strong pipeline of AAPI leaders is becoming a reality. As our champion Norman Netta began his political career at the county council level and at the mayoral level, we are proud to feature today three shining stars that are mayors of large metropolitan areas. Mayor Todd Gloria from San Diego, California, Mayor Bruce Harrell of Seattle, Washington, and Mayor Aftab Puribal 
Mexico. Our next generation leaders are also in the legislatures. We are pleased to bring to you Georgia State Representative Sam Park, the first openly gay AAPI legislator in Georgia, and State Senator Keisha Ram, the youngest elected state senator of Vermont. We're also delighted to introduce to you California Attorney General Rob Bonta, the first Filipino American to hold that position. And David Chu, the first, the city attorney of San Francisco. Thank you all for joining us today. Their message of hope and accomplishments will energize our efforts to encourage friends and families to vote. As the first person of Asian Pacific Islander heritage to serve as the mayor of the city of San Diego, I know that it's important that I may be the first, but I can't be the last. That's why I've made it a point of making sure that we appoint more API community members to boards and commissions and top leadership posts at the city of San Diego. I hope that more API people will engage and participate in the civic process and the decision making in this great country of ours. And I have a challenge to my fellow API community. Let's organize, let's mobilize, and let's vote this November. Happy Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Hello, my name is Bruce Harrell and I'm the mayor of the great city of Seattle. I'm the first mayor of Asian descent here and I'm the 57th mayor in our city's history. I've been a Democrat since 1977 when I first registered to vote. I think one of the things I'm most proud of is when I was elected to the city council before this position, I passed the race and social justice legislation, which required an equity lens in all of our policies and all of our investment decisions. And that lens required that people who are most affected by policies are at the table and have a meaningful say so in our decisions. As mayor, I think that I'm creating a whole new dialogue on race and social justice. I look at our particular API community and I talk about as we celebrate our unique differences amongst ourselves. And we all know we have differences within our API culture. That when we look at those differences, differences, we are using that toward a pathway to commonality. We're using our diversity as a tool to achieve what is common in our cultures. And I think our country is long overdue for that discussion. This is a rich conversation because it requires us to listen and to learn. And I think as we do this, we'll be better citizens, better Americans, we will help immigrant and refugee communities because it's about the learning experience. I'm excited to be the mayor of such a great city, a city here that started as a port and maritime city and then grew through high tech and biotech. We have a great university system, manufacturing aerospace. So I think that we can be a strong partner for other cities and other collaborators in our Democratic Party. So again, my name is Bruce Harold, and we're building one Seattle. And I want to say it's I'm proud to celebrate the API community, the Asian Americans, the Pacific Islanders, and the indigenous people, Native Americans month. And I'm truly honored to, see, to, to say this message to my Democrat brothers and sisters. Hey everyone, it's Aftab Pureval, mayor of the city of Cincinnati. And I'm so proud to be part of a history-making class of mayors elected this year. I, along with Bruce Harrell in Seattle and Michelle Wu in Boston, proved that Asian Americans can not only lead in any capacity, legislative or executive, but that AANHPIs can run and win anywhere in the country. But Bruce, Michelle, and I's career, much less our victory, would not have been possible without the trailblazing efforts of another mayor, the great Norm Mineta. We, all of us, stand on his shoulders as a community, we have so much to be excited for, but we can never forget the giants who created the conditions for our leadership to even be possible. Thank you, and happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Hey y'all, it's Representative Sam Park, the first Asian American Democrat elected to the Georgia State Legislature. It was my honor to help lead the effort to turn out Asian Americans across the state to help elect President Joe Biden, Senator Raphael Warnock, and Senator John Ossoff to change the course of our nation's history. Because of the power of Asian American voters in Georgia, we moved our country forward and we helped pass legislation to stem the rising tide of discrimination and violence against our communities. 
Much remains to be done, however. The times are tough. I have hope that we have the power to overcome the challenges we face. As John Lewis once said, the vote is the most powerful, nonviolent change agent we have in a democratic society, and we must use it. And there is no doubt in my mind that we will use the power of our vote this November to reelect Senator Warnock and elect Stacey Abrams as the next governor of Georgia, along with Democrats up and down the ticket. So as we close out this month, may we celebrate the progress we've made and continue the work that remains ahead. Thank you and happy Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This year we passed an environmental justice bill that ensures that all Vermonters are able to access a clean, healthy environment, no matter their zip code, income, or racial background. As one of the only AAPI elected officials in Northern New England, it's meant a lot to me to have connection and support from around the country to make sure that we are serving all Americans, but particularly those who have been most left behind. Happy AANHPI History and Heritage Month, and thank you so much for everything you do. Hello, Democrats. It's Rob Bonta, California Attorney General here, wishing you a happy AAPI Heritage Month. I'm proud to serve as California's first Filipino-American Attorney General, and I'm proud to fight for you and our diverse AAPI communities. I'm the son of labor activists who organize farm workers for better wages and working conditions alongside some of our greatest AAPI changemakers, including Larry Itliong and Philip Veracruz. My parents taught me to celebrate AAPI heritage, but they also taught me that there is more to do, and that's never been more true. We've seen an unacceptable rise of hate, gun violence, attempts to strip away our fundamental rights and health care. What do we do as Democrats when injustices like these get in our way? We get to work. We fight back. And that's what I'm doing as your Attorney General. That's why I launched the Racial Justice Bureau to tackle the rise of hate. That's why I sued ghost gun manufacturers and I'm defending our life-saving gun laws in court. That's why my team won at the Supreme Court, saving the entire Affordable Care Act. And you bet we are fighting like hell to defend your reproductive freedom. Because these are AAPI issues. These are Democrat issues. These are American issues. Thank you for all your hard work in these fights and others. And thank you to the DNC for hosting this virtual celebration. Happy AAPI Heritage Month. Hi, I'm David Chu from San Francisco. When I was growing up in my first generation immigrant family, I never expected to become a lawyer or an elected official. Because my immigrant family, we knew no lawyers or elected officials. I certainly never expected to become the first Asian American president of our Board of Supervisors, to represent Eastern San Francisco in the California State Assembly, or today to be San Francisco's first city attorney. Despite all that our API communities have endured during our 170 year history, for those of us who are your elected officials today across America in 2022, we get to sit at the table, fighting for our communities, delivering for our communities. Despite all that we've gone through during the past two years of pandemic and recession and anti-Asian hate, we are coming back stronger than ever. I am so hopeful for my six-year-old son and his generation because we are here. We are rising up. We are making America better. So from California, Happy Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Peace out. Hi everybody, it's Midori Francis Iwama here, wishing everyone a very happy and very hopeful AAPI month. Um, I'm in New York right now where I live, but I just got back from Los Angeles where I attended Gold House's first ever and hopefully annual Gold Gala, which was a celebration of their um, AAPI 100, these top 100 Asian visionaries um, who have contributed to our country in various ways. It left me with such a sense of community and belonging and pride that um, honestly is, is, is new. And it, it made me feel really hopeful about 
Asian American issues and representation taking more of a, of, of a center stage. You know, November is coming up. There are a lot of issues on the table, including women's rights. I just want people to feel empowered, to use their voices, to use their vote, to show up, to be visible, and to embrace this community, which is what I'm trying to do. So I'm wishing you all the best. As Sandra O oh once said, it's an honor just to be Asian. Hello everyone, I'm Nisha Ganatra, and I'm very excited to be here with all of you. This is a really wonderful way to honor our diverse heritage and celebrate our incredible accomplishments. And this lineup of politicians and entertainers and activists just blow me away. Um, but of course I'm here because we're being called upon again to help deliver these elections. It's not enough that we were the margin of victory in 2020. We need to do it again and help deliver in 2022. In fact, our collective progress depends on it. Over the past 18 months, we've watched the Supreme Court take away a woman's right to choose. We've witnessed continued gun violence across the country and 50 senators that refuse to do anything about it. We are watching our capital be assaulted. We are watching voters of color be sidelined. We are watching our communities being targeted and districts being gerrymandered and don't say gay bills are sweeping the South. Also, there's hate crimes against Asian Americans, all fueled by the Republican rhetoric, blaming Asians for the pandemic. Every marginalized community is in legislative crosshairs right now. That means all of us, we are all at risk. Please rally your candidates. Please support candidates that want AANHPIs to live in a country that values our community and our voices and our experiences. Together, we can be the change that we so desperately need. Together, we can keep rising. Happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mark Takano. Hi, I'm Congressman Mark Takano. This Asian American Hawaiian Native Pacific Islander Month, I reflect on two very simple truths. Leadership makes a difference and representation matters. 80 years ago, failed political leadership and no Asian American representation in Congress resulted in my parents and grandparents being subjected to an unjust incarceration in internment camps during World War II. Five years ago, a demagogic president winked and nodded at white supremacists in Charlottesville, Virginia, when he notoriously remarked that there were good people on both sides. He welcomed fierce and blatant racism into the public sphere. Today, we have a diverse Congress to push back on such misleadership. We have a Democratic President Biden who said that white supremacy is a cancer on our nation and that hate can have no safe harbor in America. His leadership is making a difference. The language of our leaders matter. Having over 17 AAPI members of Congress, nearly all of them Democrats, is making a difference as well. Instead of the silence and complicity of elected officials 80 years ago, AAPI members of Congress led the effort to pass the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, signed into law by President Biden, to fight back against anti-Asian hate. We also supported our fellow Democrats in establishing a restaurant revitalization fund and because of the Democrats in Congress, 174,000 children in my congressional district benefited from the child tax credit. Who leads does make a difference, and representation matters. We must condemn the cancer of white supremacy because hate must have no safe harbor in America. Together, we will make racism taboo again. Hi everyone, I'm Congressman Andy Kim from New Jersey. As we're in Heritage Month, I spent a lot of time thinking about our history and our culture of our community, but also how we tell our story and what kind of impact that that's having. I think about a woman that I met in New Jersey last year who's telling me about the discrimination and violence that she's faced over her life. And I remember asking her, have you reported this? Is this something you've reported to the government or to local law enforcement? And she said, no. And her response is something that I, I still think about. She said the reason she didn't was that she didn't think anyone would care. 
I just it broke my heart, honestly, to hear her say that. that. No one cares, no one's listening. That sense of helplessness and isolation. And it reminded me of the importance of what we try to do to build a community, look out for each other, but also really try to hit home the story of a and HPIs in this country, that we can be standing up for each other, but we also need to make sure we're telling our story. So, you know, these, the legislation that we were able to move forward out of Congress, that's setting forward a commission that hopefully eventually will turn into a, a Asian Pacific American National Museum in DC that can tell our story about what happened in my home state, New Jersey, that is now only the second state in the country that is requiring the teaching of our history, of the A and HPI history in our public schools. That's how we tell the story. That's how we move forward and try to be listened to, try to make our voices heard. So the woman and others that I know are out there can say people are listening, people are paying attention, and people care. So when we think of Heritage Month, we not only look backwards, but let's look forward on what we can do for our community. I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's celebrating Heritage Month for everything that you're doing to push this forward. Thank you. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, and I'm honored to represent Washington's 7th Congressional District and to serve as the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. But most important today, I am so proud to serve as the first and only South Asian American woman ever elected to the House of Representatives. What an honor it is to be celebrating AAPI Heritage Month with you today. Now, some of you know that I come to the House of Representatives as an organizer for decades, having started and led for 12 years what is the largest immigrant advocacy organization in Washington state, a state known for its significant AAPI population. That organizer mentality is the same mentality I bring to the halls of Congress every day, a belief that collective action can bring about progress. And if politics is the art of the possible, as we are so often told, then I believe it is our job as organizers, whether in elected office or as community leaders, to shift the boundaries of what is seen as possible, to be bold, unite, deliver, and make a real difference in the lives of people all across America. That's how we create a country that invests in the most vulnerable, that creates opportunity for all, and that recognizes that your future is intertwined with mine and that we're all better off when we're all better off. These last two years of the pandemic have been challenging for everyone in our country, but I know that it's been particularly challenging for our AAPI communities and other folks of color. I know that in the midst of the heartbreak of the pandemic, our AAPI communities faced a 169% increase in hate crimes. This type of bigotry is absolutely unacceptable, and we have been fighting back in Congress with resolutions to condemn anti-AAPI hate, to get resources for our communities, to move bills forward like my South Asian Heart Health Awareness and Research Act, which would specifically target the alarming rate of heart disease in our country and help provide the resources to address the scourge. But also, we are working every single day to lift up and celebrate the contributions of AAPIs across our country, including in starting small businesses, in leading on the front lines as community leaders, and in every single field across the country. We've worked hard to call attention to the growing important role of AAPI voters in our democracy and the successes that we all have had together in turning out voters in swing states across the country and helping to deliver a Democratic House, Senate, and White House. I promise I will continue to organize with you to make sure our communities are safe, healthy, and thriving and to make sure that we have seats at the table and can shine a light on the issues that affect us the most. I see every one of you and I and my colleagues will fight for you. So as we celebrate this month, let us rejoice in our resilience and find pride in the contributions of our many diverse cultures and experience. America is so much better off for those contributions. 
Happy Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And thank you for inviting me to join you. Hi, everyone. Eric Salcedo, AAPI Coalitions Director at the DNC. Thank you so much for joining us as we close out Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I'd like to invite all of you to join us on June 12th for our national AANHPI voter registration training. Learn how to make sure your family and friends are ready to vote this November. Learn how to plan a voter registration drive and recruit volunteers. For AANHPIs to be the margin of victory again in 2022, the first step is making sure our community is registered and ready to vote. Text ENGAGE to 43367 to sign up. Thank you and happy AANHPI Heritage Month. Thank you, Sam, Roger, and Eric. You are what makes the machinery of the DNC work. For all that you do and for all that you are, and in particular for this afternoon, I thank you. I wanna take a moment to thank my wonderful friend and DNC chairman, Jamie Harrison. Jamie is the real thing. Without Jamie's unwavering support for our community and for our work, we would not have been able to accomplish a fraction of what we have been able to accomplish. He has always stood with us, supporting us and always fighting for what is right. For that and for so much more, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing me the opportunity to host this wonderful event, for spending this time with us as we close this incredible month of celebration of our heritage. Thank you to the second gentleman of the United States and to all the wonderful political superstars that joined us today, including my dear friends and vice chair, Senator Tammy Duckworth, and my dear friends, Judy Chu, Grace Meng, Mark Takano, Andy Kim, and Pramila Jayapal. Special shout out to the incredibly talented superstars that headlined this event. Thank you for your words, your songs, your wisdom. Thank you for the gift of your talent and your time. Special, special thanks to David Henry Huang, Gemma Chen, Harry Shum Jr., the incredible cast of Billions, and the amazing gifts of Shoba Narayan and Julia Harriman singing the story of tonight and Ashley Park singing Democracy. Special shout out to New York Times bestseller author Jeff Yang, Phil Yu, and Philip Wang, who gave us Rice, the story of Asian Americans. As we launch our Margin of Victory campaign for these midterms, we are energized by the words, the songs, the messages, the encouragement of all the speakers today. And we are reminded that we are that margin that will make the difference in whether we can save this democracy. Our democracy is at stake. Democracy has been shown to be fragile this year. For those of us like myself who have lived in totalitarian regimes and fled them, freedom and democracy is priceless. Without it, all else pales. A little over a year ago, the GOP tried to openly overturn the presidential election. In the years since, they have served as an obstacle for voting rights, for investment in human infrastructure, and now we are on the verge of losing a woman's right to choose. If we do not show up in November to vote for congressmen and for senators that support our communities, the consequences could be dire. It is a chance that we cannot afford to take. So we must fight for it. The next battle is the voting booth. I wanna again thank Tim Huang for his song. We couldn't have said it better. This administration has accomplished more in one and a half year than many past administrations in four years. So it behooves us to shout at the top of our lungs, the life-changing and yes, in some cases, life-saving accomplishments of this administration. During this past hour, we began to shine a bright light on our very talented new stars in our firmament political and entertainment both. We will do it throughout the year 
At this event, we introduced several new entertainment talents and the next generation of political leaders. These are our new award winners. Our, these are our next governors, our next senators, our next Congress members, and yes, our next president or vice president. We have such a bright firmament. Thank you especially to all of my partners on, this, um, on the incredibly talented DNC AAPI creative team who pulled this beautiful event together and to all the political and entertainment shining stars for your contributions, not only to this event, but all year long. This event is not only for Asian Americans, but all Americans who believe in unity, courage, compassion, and democracy. Thus, it is very fitting that we close our new our, our event today with David Henry Huang's song, Democracy, sung by Ashley Park. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So many times it's left me battered and bruised, disillusioned in pain, feeling I've been used. I swear I'll give it up before it downright kills me, then it comes back again with promises that thrill me and I forget what I really should know and I forget that it's such a big, big show and I dream, oh I dream of all it could be and once more I believe, I believe, I believe It's broken my heart so many times before, but this one was the worst. Left me screaming on the floor. I was taught in the land of the free. from trauma am i insane addicted to drama oh 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 and i forget what i really should know i forget that it's such a big big show and i dream no i dream that our people can be what they can be enough, worthy of trust enough, kind enough, smart enough, with a big heart enough, good and grown up enough to lift us up, lift us up, lift us up, lift us up, and I dream. Country's a disaster in so many ways, but we have the power, we have the power, we have the power.